Hello, greetings. This is Gilles Mansur. I wanted to come and say hello. I wanted to wish you a good day, a happy new moon in Libra. I uh, also wanted to thank you for, for, uh, for your comments, for your support, for your messages. It's, uh, it's very kind of what I've been through. We are going through some difficult time for most, uh, most, most people. We go through a difficult time right now. There's a great deal of challenges. And uh, it seems like one day is fine, the other day is more difficult. And then one day is fine, and the other day is more difficult. For there is a great deal of tension huh, with this... Um, and this tension with this new moon in uh, in Libra, it's like we all ask to 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 upgrade our our, our relationships, whether it is relationship with ourselves, relationship with the world, relationship with the higher planes. Everything needs to be upgraded, and. Um, and it's very difficult to be holding frequency. Yes, it is really what's what's the key to this teaching is to be to be constant in holding a frequency so we can understand our powers of manifestation. Um, this and, and it requires effort. It requires focus to to keep the focus internally and to stay focused on on that which is wanted and not allowing ourselves to to, to be distracted by all the things of the material world. So that we can eventually become master of vibration, a master of reality, and so um, for for Libra is like um, li, li, this 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 time of Libra, this this new moon is uh, is um, is promises justice and, and balance and equilibrium, but we don't always feel that, eh? we don't always uh, we don't necessarily feel it. It's it's not something that's always present, and sometimes uh, so so it is good to to be. Um, to pause as much as possible, if you can afford to pause and and, and take the time to pause, um, because this um, there is this opposition with the moon and Chiron, Chiron, which brings about the wounds, and so so there is a we, we can be feel like we are we're in a cold hard place. Huh? We're not always in the it's like over oh, this cold hard place. Those doubts are overshadowing love and magic sometimes, and so just be patient and allow yourself to. To pose as much as possible, and there is a, this, also the, the the square of Venus to 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 the to, to the to the south node, the north node, and, and and in Capricorn with Pluto and Saturn, which is like the Pluto, the Lord of Transformation, the the, the subconscious, and Saturn, the Lord of Karma. And so there is a great deal of um, the, the, this. The, it's not as easy of a moon as we, we could uh, could imagine. Although the, the, there is a great promise of liberation, spirit is telling me that I'm, I have this liberation that's right ahead of me. But it can feel a bit heavy with this Saturn, Saturn South Node, and Pluto that are in Capricorn that are always pouring down. For originally, this planet was in a spiral of ascension, like every other world that God created. Uh, it was just a spiral of ascension. People would come to incarnate on the planet, who would be uh, living in the physical, but connected to the divine forces of the universe that would give us guidance every step of the way. And eventually, there were some beings, that darker, darker soul that came in and to control over this matrix took it to the planet from the, the ascension spiral and, and threw it in the center of a wheel of karma where beings would have to to suffer again and again and again through reincarnation process of incarnation and reincarnation through, through this this wheel of karma so they could continue to nourish the the the, the, the controllers of the matrix who feed them who feed from negative energy but this is the end of the cycle the earth is returning to this ascension spiral it is just all these dark clouds that needs to be evacuated for we all have lived many, many lifetimes. For those who may believe in incarnation, we may not have the memory of that. But we've we've been. I know that myself. I've had life. I, I had I had enlightened life. Where I actually achieved ascension already. But I was I chose to return into the samsara, into the dark, in order to integrate the darkness and become more of the truth of God. And, and so I explored that lifetime where I explored power, I explored military conquest, I explored. The, so we all explored all those things. We, we've been we've been um, we, we've been through every role and so we do not want to judge others too severely because we might have done some sort of things like that in the past and um, and um and, and and we we don't remember so and sometimes when we judge someone for something we end up in a situation where we do something similar so it is good to to stay light and to to remain um, to keep the the forgiveness aspect uh, uh, for ourselves and for others as as um, 
as activated is possible. The highest wisdom for, for us uh, this, for this moon is the hard drop. It is the, the oasis in the desert. It is wisdom. It is the situation. The situation is wisdom. What comes around that is the moon. It is the test. It is the phallic mushroom. It is... Um, it is the the the, the last uh, the, the the walking through the, the valley of the shadows in order to emerge into the light. So, but it is uh, it is we, we are we are being tested and we are t testing ourselves to test our power, our power to focus on what is positive. In order, to, if we can focalize enough on what is positive, we'll become to manifest and we'll come to realize. But sometimes it's not easy because we have those things, those negative energies, those negative patterns that are activated within ourselves that we always have. To to bring into balance and, and that's why forgiveness is so important what we see in the in our conscious mind that may unfold before us is the past it is a dangerous pussy so it's about integrating the past with compassion and lucidity so that the past doesn't come to bite us in the back in the ass, so to speak. What we have in our subconscious is survival. We want to come out of survival. It is garbage. It is the pollution. It is, it is this worry. It is, there is no more need. We have to rely on our inner truth. Where we are now is the, is the earthbound. It is, the, it is the, the salvation. It is the universe. It is being able to be detached from the lower, lower thought form and matrix. What's coming up in the near future is the waves of bliss. So there may be so Uranus may bring some amazing surprises into the mix. There may be uh, maybe great love, great resources, good money, opportunities, uh, romance, all kinds of things can come in the near future. This, where we are in the situation, our strength within the situation is a deep end. So we are really at the end of the of the end of the of that old cycle. What comes to us from our surrounding, our, our environment, is just passing through. Everything is in transformation. So, so we have to we have to to, to hold on, to pause as much as possible, to see the, the to see how to transform our life, to increase the quality of our life for the for the twenty first century. My master guide explained to me that in the in the twentieth century, <laughs> a long time ago, when I first co conversed with him that. The, the, the shift of consciousness for the whole of humanity in the 21st century will not be about the accumulation of money and the power of others. It will be about the quality of life. Quality of life. It's really what, what it all comes down to that. Even though my, my life is not on the highest quality I could imagine. That's why sometimes I feel like, well, what's the, if I cannot manifest the life I need to, to find a quality of life, maybe I don't need to be here. But Spirit says it's coming, so I have to hold on and be patient. As much as possible. Um, what's in our inner emotion, our hopes and fear, is the chameleon. It's 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 a, it's a position that doesn't feel very grounded because we feel like we, it's the ability to adapt to whatever's coming, to adapt to the environment. But we need grounding also, and the chameleon is never really grounded because it's always shifting to adapt to its environment. So always be like a tree, anchor your roots, and and know who you are as much as possible, and the outcome. For the universe is assisting in this self empowerment, and the outcome is the burning bush, the linear street. It is the connection to our spirit, soul, and family. It's a spirit family. It is a revelation. It is a, it is the burning bush. It is um, and this linear tree is is, our, is also a spiritual descendant. It's connecting to our spirit guides. It's connecting to our, our soul and spirit family. So there is a, uh, although this, this time may not be the most enjoyable for most people because of that square of Venus to the, to the, the, the North and South Node and, and the square on the South Node in Capricorn, Pluto and Saturn, which makes it a bit difficult. We have to breathe through it as much as possible and trust and, and, uh, and feel as if we're, as if we're already in, in this, in this, um, as much as possible in this in this life that we have chosen, that we desire, that will bring us joy and fulfillment. Well, I hope this message was interesting for you. I thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I will do my best to continue to communicate on this channel and maybe other channels as well soon. Paintings behind me, it is a portrait. I just changed the face. I don't know if you can really see it. And here, it's like a person that's seated on the throne, on, on a big seat, on a big armchair. And there's this, this, this pink circle, and it says meditate on it. It's just a reminder. So it's when you sit, you say. Because meditation is so essential. Meditation, prayer, walk in nature, those are the three things that really brings you, bring, brings you back to what is essential, is the, the well-being of, of our inner self. So it is, those are very important aspect of um, 
on the experience, we do need that. Huh? If, we, if we let, let go of those things, we, we, we get completely uh, absorbed in, those, in, in this outer world. So we want to keep uh, do the effort to focalize on the inner world as much as possible. And uh, here it is a painting. It's the first of three. I mean, it's three of them on the same format of the solar system and the 100 or 150 major planets. They're all very different. But I'm looking forward to, to show those paintings uh, in... Uh, to share those paintings because it's very subtle and they're really hard to see. The, the, the detail needs to be seen in person in order to appreciate. And but they, they, I've been doing them. For, I've been looking at them for years and I'm still not tired of it. I hope I'm, I hope I'll be able to find a public um, in the art world, collectors, museums, galleries. Um, um, dealers that they will they will be uh, sensitive to this to that which I'm proposing in this because I see there's a lot of things uh, there, there is a great deal of increase in consciousness that is also coming through the coming in um, in the art world. I'm going to pull four more cards from the Akash. The highest wisdom for us today is a figure of authority. You want to be a figure of authority. Once you find the authority upon yourself, on yourself, you are the highest authority. Nobody knows you better than you. Don't let any outside authority tell you who you are, or what you feel, or what you need to do, or what are your desires. This is uh, all um, to become uh, empowered and to become an authority. What we need to understand is community life, how to apply this authority to the administration of society, how to become a, to, to become a coordinating force and, and to, to be able to integrate ourselves within that society and in the same time because we do want to raise it up but it's we have to accept the situation as it is and sometimes uh, people are like the increase in, in technology is moving really fast but the, the, the level of, of ethics how do we use technology uh, it's not always it's not always used for the highest good of all and and so it's like um, humanity is facing so uh, there is some um, Thank God there is a supervision of spirit. If things go too far off, uh, spirit will uh, will censure it. I'm sure because it's like we're, we're getting a lot of technology that are very dangerous for for the collective of humanity, and they are into the hands of people or even military technologies that are not really. Um, they are getting more sophisticated, but the technology we have to, to be used with consciousness, with ethics, with love, and so the, to increase the quality of life once again, not to apply power on the world and to force uh, force power on the world. So it's about it's about creating this community, understanding, envisioning this community uh, of life where, where people can live free in a clean environment, where they can be creative, where they can have all their needs met, and, and, and their technology will greatly serve us and assist us. What we need to do is health. We, do, we need to do whatever is, ne is needed, whatever, to improve the quality of our health. It's, uh, it's about the intake. What, what we intake in our body, and for, I'm doing a lot of, maybe doing more sports or exercise or, or to, to increase the quality of the food. It's not about eating more food, eating less food with better quality is usually because even if we, if we take better quality food, we don't need to eat as much because the food is more nutritious. And also all the, to, to accept to let go of certain of the old habits that we used to have that um, they were not necessarily of the highest good for the physical body. And the outcome is love life. So there is there is romance and love coming. That was also shown in the Dakini by those waves of bliss. So it will be a surprise for me because I've been out of relationship for quite a while. I always thought I've, I've been in many, many relationships in my life. And I always thought that like, whatever the problem material, when you're in a couple, a relationship, it's always easier to handle all those problems and navigate that when you're alone, it's like more challenging. So yet I'm an ascetic and I felt like at some point I, whenever I came into a relationship, I was like, oh, I need my space spiritually to grow and evolve all by myself. So I kind of like I had a number of short relationships and eventually, I, um, but I think I'm ready to, to come back to, to, to a level of relation, new level of relationship with this, this Libra, um, Libra New Moon. I'm going to sing a song that's it's very uh, adventurous to sing this song. It's a song... Um, it's difficult to sing, but um, I'm inspired to sing it anyway. It's a song by, that was written by the artist formerly known as Prince. Uh, when, he died, when he passed away, I wanted to sing Purple Rain, and I wasn't, didn't feel courageous enough. I said, well, go see Tom Jones. He will show you how to do that. But I didn't do it, and so I'm, I'll, sing, I'll, I'll sing this song. It's, been, it's a song that's been sung only by, by one person by Shane O'Connor, and it's a, it's a beautiful song, and I'll go for it anyway. It goes like this. It's been seven hours and fifteen days 
since you took your love away. I go out every night and sleep all day, since you took your love away. Since you've been gone, I can do whatever I want. I can see whomever I choose. I can eat my dinner in a fancy restaurant. But nothing, I said nothing can take away this blues. Cause nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. It's been so lonely without you here, like a bird without a song. Nothing can stop these lonely tears from falling. Tell me, baby. Where did I go wrong? I put my arms around every girl I see But they only remind me of you I went to the doctor and guess what he told me? Guess what he told me? He said, boy, you better try to have fun no matter what you do but he's a fool, cause nothing compares, nothing compares to you. All the flowers that you planted, mama, in the backyard, all died and went away. I know that living with you, baby, was sometimes hard But I'm willing to give it another try Nothing compares Nothing compares to you Nothing compares Nothing compares to you Nothing compares, nothing compares to you. Ah, thank you very much for sticking until the end. It's, it's a beautiful song from my Shani O'Connor, who's got the most marvelous voice on that. But I just was just inspired to sing it anyway, so I thought I went for it, like bold courage. <laughs> you know, it's like jump into it. For, for when we don't know how to do something, by doing it anyway, we, we learn, we practice in doing it. No matter what we, we feel inspired to do, it is good to do it, even if we're going to fail many times. If uh, for an, uh, Climbing mountains is, is, is dangerous. I'm not talking about just doing some like extreme things, but in many, many small things, it is good to to practice those things so we feel uh, we familiarize ourselves with those things and um, and practice like the arts. It took me seven years before I could paint my first paintings, and for seven years after I came out of art school, I used to paint paintings, but they would look like someone else until I went there, they just came out. So the the card of the day is the chariot, is the Archangel Metatron. So we want to salute Prince, and by the way, he's a wonderful songwriter. It's self-determination and, and self determination and self-control, evolution of career, public uh, recognition of a success. So there is those two horses, uh, the dark and the light, and, and those two horses have to find balance in order to pull this chariot, it's the chariot of Apollo. So I wish you a wonderful day, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later, namaste.